Hey there, welcome back to my channel or hello if you're new. My name is Raven and today we are going to be talking about Google Keep for ADHD. I just want to like throw a few disclaimers out there. I know that ADHD affects everyone differently and it for some people it is a full on disability and for some people it doesn't affect them as much. Both are very valid experiences. I do find that my ADHD is disabling. I've been putting like years of work and experimentation into figuring out things that help me. And while this does help me and I do, I do hope it helps you, I know that it it's not gonna help everyone because tools work very differently for different people. That is completely okay. So I'm just gonna be sharing my ideas and things that help me. I am not trying to invalidate anyone's experience with ADHD. Also, just because you aren't diagnosed with ADHD doesn't mean that it's not, that Google Keep isn't a useful tool for you. I've been using Google Keep for like five or six years. <laughs> I've had a lot of time to play around with it and figure out things that work for me. And I hope you find this video helpful. Let's jump into it and talk about how I like to use Google Keep for my ADHD. Okay, so I wanted to start off with an overview of what Google Keep is so that if you are unfamiliar with this app and you're interested in using it, whether for your ADHD or not, you have more of a reference than just me showing you what I like to do. Google Keep in itself is a note-taking app. It's more like a sticky note keeper than it is a traditional notes app where everything is just like in a separate folder. You have everything laid out you can pretty much see everything at once. This is a like fake mock account that I made so that I'm not putting all of my personal information on because I do use my Google Keep account to like track my medication and medical things so that it's easy to find when I'm at a doctor. I did try to put everything in here that I normally like to use. There is honestly a lot of features in Google Keep that I think that could make a very like customizable system for you and I will be honest, I don't use Google Keep for all of my notes and all of my data. I really like it as a quick reference, quick note-taking app instead of a in-depth note-taking app. Also, you can use Google Keep on your phone and your tablet. I don't know if you can use it on a smartwatch, but I'm assuming you could get the reminders and notifications. All right, so starting off, let's go over what you can do as far as taking a note. You have a input bar up at the top where you can eat, like you can just start typing, no problem, make a note, write down an idea, super simple. Or you also have the option of a checklist is really great for like, you know, any shopping list or to-do list that you can make, anything really. I'm on my computer obviously, so I can't use the drawing feature, but you do have a drawing feature. You can also put in a note and on the phone, you can also do a sound recording. So wanted to like just talk to yourself later and leave yourself a note that way instead of typing it out. That is great for anyone who thinks and talks way faster than they type like me. Having all of these note options is really great, but what I really like about Note, uh, about Google Keep, not Notion, is that you have the option of reminders. And that is way more functional than just having a place to put all of your spare thoughts. Knowing that you can come back to it, very important. So you have this option of remind me, and then you can remind yourself at any time, day, or anything like that or very, very helpful, you can pick a place. So basically you, anything that's on Google Maps, you can just put in. So like if you want to be reminded next time you pass the, the grocery store to pick up milk, you can have a reminder that goes off when you're near the, your grocery store or that you need to stop at a friend's house and drop off the thing that's been in your car for two weeks, three months. I'm not judging, I'm just outing myself. If you're using the time option, you can also set it to repeat, which is really, really awesome. You can completely customize it by weekday or by whenever you need to do. If you've ever used notifications or repeating events in Google Calendar, it is very similar. You can set it up as a repeating notification or just a sing one time notification and those will show up in your Google Calendar. I know not everyone uses those. I know that time blocking is not important for everyone, but I rely very heavily on it. And if you are wanting 
to start using those tools and features. This is a great way to integrate them and have more information. All right, so let's jump into how I personally use Google Keep. It's a customizable app, so like there's no right way or wrong way as long as it's working for your brain. I first have a pin section that I try to keep well managed. You can pin any note or item in Google Keep that you really want to just have at the top. A fantastic idea if you need to reference it very often. The most important thing that I keep pinned is my grocery list. I have my grocery list shared with my husband so I can just add him as a collaborator and it is fantastic because one you can click off in real time so if we're in a grocery store together and we separate we can both pull it up pull up the grocery list on our phone just start clicking as we grab things off the shelves and we don't end up doubling back because we can see what the other person is doing the more realistic situation is that i make the grocery list on my computer because i really like having a big screen to do everything on and to be able to click easily through tabs as i'm looking for meal ideas and everything and then my husband has it on his phone and he is in charge of the grocery list at the store. I do keep the grocery list as a running list. It just stays pinned to the top of my account. It's also synced to our Google Assistant. This feature is honestly life-changing. Basically anytime I say hello assistant I can just tell it to add something to the list without having to open my phone, open the app, and type it in myself because opening the phone means I'm seeing all of the notifications that I just got. Opening the app means I have to go from those notifications to the app. And by the time I'm typing it up, I have forgotten what I actually needed. So we have some of those speakers throughout the house. And so just randomly, we just yell, add barbecue sauce. And it's fantastic. I, <laughs> that feature alone just makes me absolutely love all of this ecosystem. Before actually shopping, I do organize the items. If we're going to multiple stores, I will just put what store we're getting what from, or some, I don't do this every week, but there are some weeks where I go through and I order every item according to the order that we will get to that item in the store. So I'll put all of the produce section stuff first and then all of the like bakery stuff. It's it's extra, but it does save time and it makes things a lot less stressful at the store. You can indent items and make it so that it is like a whole section of a list instead of having everything joined, conglomulated together. Okay, so the next thing that I like to keep in my pinned area is a weekend to-do list. Basically, it is just a checklist of all of the tasks that we keep saying we're gonna do throughout the week, but we never do. It hasn't been completely life-changing, but it has been really helpful because when we remember to use it, it's very functional. I didn't make an example card of this, but I meant to. I also have a list of all of my current medications and dosages in my pinned area so that when I'm at a doctor's office and I'm filling out paperwork, I don't have to guess at how to spell something and I don't have to remember what my dosage is because I'm forgetful. I love having my book mark in my pin section. I am so bad about losing actual bookmarks, like physical bookmarks. So I just started typing out my, the title of the book that I'm reading and then what page I left off of. It's actually a system that's been working better for me than a paper bookmark. So I'm keeping it. It's something that I really like doing. The next thing that I really like to keep in my pin section is an idea list. For me particularly, I really like having a video idea list that I can just add to whenever I get the idea and then I transport it into Notion and actually organize it as a video so that I can schedule it and plan it and make all of the things happen. Having a running list that I can just add to whenever I'm out and about or whenever I'm laying in bed and should be sleeping makes it so that I never actually run out of ideas because apparently I actually have good video ideas. I just don't remember that I had them. And keeping it up top makes it a lot easier for when I have that idea, because when I didn't have it pinned, I would just start new checklists everywhere. And it was not helpful because I couldn't find them when I needed them. All right, we're almost done with my pin section, but one of the things that I do like to have in my pin section 
is a mantra or quote section. One of my interests in high school was just quotes and words and anytime I heard anything that I like even remotely liked I would always write it down and I had these giant posters all over my room that were just me writing quotes down. Recently when I started therapy I had already had something like this but I've actually started using it a lot more. It's just been really helpful for those days where you just don't feel good and having it up front makes it easier to see and even if you're reading something on accident I just feel like a little bit of it gets absorbed into your head. The last thing that I keep in my pinned section, I actually have multiple of these, is I have different reset and transition checklists for throughout the day. Every time I watch a productivity video, they always emphasize how preparing yourself and setting the tone helps you to work or relax more deeply. And that seems so very nice, but that idea doesn't come to me naturally. So I started making these checklists to help me with transitioning into different parts of my day. I also set them to repeating reminders so that they work with my schedule. It, it really does help a lot. So if you want to like practice setting the tone or making sure you're prepared for something, having a checklist yell at you that you need to do the thing is what's been working for me at least. So we've gone over my pinned section. Let's talk about what goes into the not pinned section. A not pinned note is basically just a note that you want to have for later, but you don't need it in the forefront of your mind. I will say that you should definitely use labels to help you contextualize the notes, make them a lot easier to find when you need them. I like to save links for things that I want to buy or look up later. I hate shopping for my phone, but at night I will randomly just start browsing Amazon or looking on Google for like rabbit stuff or like random office stuff. And so I just put it in my Google Keep and I will label it. And then later when I'm like, oh, what was that one thing that I wanted to look into? I can just click all of the links and it's fantastic. This year in particular, I made myself a birthday list and then I tagged my husband in it. I don't need that information in the forefront of my mind. I don't need it to be easy access. I just need it to give to someone else. This is also really helpful if you're you if you're doing any thing like in a group. I'm also using this for a event that I'm helping to plan. I don't need all of those notes and all of those checklists to be with all of the things that I actually need on a daily basis. I also write down supply lists for different things and events like hiking and road trips so that when we're out and about I and we're realizing that we forgot bug spray or whatever it is, I will write a note, I will tag my husband or whoever it is that I'm going with and I actually have a chance at not forgetting the thing that I said I wasn't gonna forget and then obviously forgot. So other than the things that I give to other people and don't need in the front forefront of my mind, I also really like to save infographics. So that could be like a sizing guide for a product that I want to make or just like a cool graphic that has to do with mental health. I also like to log my workouts. I like having those so that if I do try to start a journal, I can just very quickly write everything down in my phone as I'm going machine to machine. Then I can put that in a more permanent log later without feeling like I need to be carrying a journal, a pen, and something to write on while in a gym because that is uncomfortable. I also really like to put product information for things that I forget. Every year I'm always like, what was those lights that I really liked last year? And just like saving the picture of the box so that I can see what it says. It's also really great to send to my husband because he always argues with me that that is not the size of the air filter we needed. And then I just like to save any random notes in my head that my goblin brain wants to keep, but I feel like it doesn't belong in my bullet journal. Anything random that I might want to look back on, I can just put it in here and then if I decide later I don't need it, I can archive it or trash it or I can label it and, or like transport it into a different app that will make it into its own thing. So I have some overall tips for creating your own system in Google Keep. I thought that I would just go over them because I know that my system's not going to work for everyone, but basically my first tip is to start simple. Not everything needs to be kept in Google Keep and not everything should be. Create a label system that reflects your priorities and also works with your brain. Give your, if you do better with verbs, instead of labeling everything by something that sounds smart, just put to do, to buy, to 
like to grow whatever it is just make sure it works with your priorities so that you're actually using it and make sure it works with your brain so that when you go to use it it makes sense to you pin any notes that you want the quickest access to and what you want in the forefront of your mind it doesn't have to be anything super life important but if you if it makes you happy to see it bring it there if it makes your life easier to have quick access to it pin it so if you're using google calendars already sync your reminders so that you can actually see those notes and lists in your calendar and not just get the notifications randomly throughout the day. Add people to your notes to help with communication and accountability. Designate time to set up your system and also go through your notes. If you use other apps for date or project management, you can use Keep to write any quick notes or ideas, but if you don't designate time to come back to it, then it's not really helpful. It might be once a week, once a month, whenever you feel like doing it, but going through labeling, archiving, relocating things to an app that makes more sense is a great way to make sure that Google Keep stays less overwhelming and actually is functional for you. Anyways, I really hope that at least something in this video is helpful to you, at least giving you an idea, if not for Google Keep, but for a system in general that helps your brain to function. It is very normal for tools to change and to maybe be more effective or less effective with time, and that is completely okay. It is not a reflection of you if an app doesn't work for you. Find something new and see if the novelty of it helps your brain. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. I am hoping to post more content about gentle productivity and things that work for my brain so that I can share them with you. I am having a really weird brain day in general, so I hope that this was cohesive and made sense. I hope you were having a wonderful day. If not today, I hope tomorrow is better. Please hit subscribe if you like gentle productivity and cozy content and I will see you in a couple of days with another video. Oh, and leave me a thumbtack or some sort of stationary related emoji in the comments to let me know that you're still listening. Go drink some water. <laughs> Bye.